Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. Today, Adobe released an update to Lightroom. Uh, the latest version of Lightroom is 6.2. If you're a Creative Cloud user, it's 2015.2. In this video, we're just going to talk about some of the things that have been updated in Lightroom. Now, um, of course, this version has some bug fixes. It has some new lens profiles. Uh, some support for new cameras and tether support for a Leica and monochrome camera. Uh, below in the description, I'll have a link to Adobe where you could see exactly what bugs were fixed and what new lens profiles and camera support there is in this version of Lightroom. Now, there are some significant updates. One being, uh, they started doing this with the last update in Lightroom. That would be 6.1 or 2015.1. The Creative Cloud users got some things that the standalone version owners did not get. And in this version, the people that own Creative Cloud uh, will get uh, a dehaze slider in the tools. And that will not be in the 6.2 version of the update. And if you go in the develop module to any of the three tools, the, the brush, the radial filter or the graduated filter, you'll see below clarity we have a dehaze slider now. So it's available in the tool. It wasn't available in the tool in earlier versions. Again, if you have 6.2, unfortunately, you're not going to be getting that. Now, what is available for all users is some improvements to the merging of HDR and panoramas. Now, I personally haven't had the opportunity to try it out, but a few of my friends have, and they said it is better. And from what I've been reading on the internet, it is improved. So if you have an earlier version of Lightroom 6 or Lightroom CC, and you did a pano or an HDR merge, and you weren't happy with the results, when you update to 6.2 or 2015, um, CC 2015.2, uh, try it again. It maybe has improved uh, for you. So give it a try. Again, I haven't had a chance to try it, but I will be trying it later today. Um, now, there are some bad things, in my opinion, that have been added to this uh, version of Lightroom. They've redesigned the import dialog. Um, I guess that should be a good thing, but in my opinion, it's a bad thing. I don't like what they did with it. And I'm going to go over that in a minute. And, it, and I'm actually going to do a new video later in the week where I go over the new import dialog in depth because it's changed rather significantly from when I did the original Learn Lightroom 6 CC video, episode one. Uh, so I need to update that. So I'm gonna be doing a new video later in the week where I'll go into the import dialog in depth, but we're gonna to touch on it here in a minute. Some of the things that I've been hearing about this latest update in Lightroom though, is that for Mac users, it has been crashing a lot. Now I haven't encountered that at all, but I haven't used it quite extensively yet. And from what I understand, uh, Adobe has been saying, if you own a Mac and it's crashing uh, a lot, to uh, help alleviate the problem, close Lightroom down. And when opening up Lightroom, so when you open Lightroom, hold the Shift and option keys in. This will reset your preferences. And apparently this helps the crashing issue. Um, if you have a PC and it happens to be crashing also, I suppose you could hit the sh hold the shift in the alt key and open Lightroom to reset your preferences and maybe that will help you as well. But I haven't been um, hearing about any significant um, issues of it crashing with Windows. So, uh, you know, I don't know. So I just don't know. And as I said, I haven't encountered it with my Macs uh, yet. Um, also, I've been hearing that it runs slow, uh, slower than it has ever run. And that has been blamed on the new import dialog. And supposedly, if you close down the new import dialog, it will improve the performance of Lightroom. Now, I'm going to touch upon the import dialog right now, and we'll talk about how to close down that new import dialog that I'm talking about. Um, first of all, 
as you know, if you're in the library module, you could import new images by clicking right here, or you could just go up to File, Import Photos and Video. Now you come with this screen. As you can see, this is different than the original import dialog. And what happened is Lightroom scanned my computer and it scanned uh, my home, you know, my the actual drive on the computer, an external drive. And since I have Adobe Elements on this computer and that has a library of images, it also scanned that as well. Um, so I came up with this and we could add photos from any of these sources. Now I do not have a memory card in the computer at the moment and if I did that would be active right here and then we could import images like we we typically would although that is slightly different as well. But let's say I wanted to import these pictures right here. When I click on it you could see the dialogue is a little different and actually with the first time you ever do this this all might be closed and you might be presented with this and it took me just a second to realize that I have to click here to get this left hand panel and I have to click here to get the right hand panel so this is where the images are coming from this is the same on the original import dialog and this is where the images are going now there is some significant change to this side of the dialog um, first of all, file handling, uh, they used to be across the top. You had copy, move, add, and uh, copy as D and G. And as you can see right now, we just have copy and add. Move is no longer available. Now these aren't raw files. Um, I think, I haven't done it yet, I think if any of these were a raw file that I would have copy as D and G there. I'm not 100% sure on that, and when I start using this more extensively and I do that video later in the week, when I go over this new import dialog, I'll let, us, I'll let everyone know about that. So move basically is no longer available, that's for sure. Um, the destination folder, you know, is fine. We could select a new destination folder by clicking here where it says select and into a subfolder. Now that's changed. There used to be a file or a yeah a folder tree down at the bottom and we could click on our folder tree of where we wanted to uh, put the images and I liked that a lot better. I could just click on my folder tree then I could put a subfolder and I could put in a date and if I made a mistake I could look down here and verify that I'm actually putting the images exactly where I want them to go. So that um, that is different obviously uh, so I don't care for that. Um, also now this is uh, keywords we could enter keywords here that's you know the same uh, add copyright info if you want to click this box and you can put your copyright info here or what I do is I have a metadata preset I call mine the import preset that's just what I named it and that actually puts all different metadata in including my copyright info it has my address and contact info in there as well so that's what I would I always do is I have my import preset we go down here to advanced and it has an import preset here which I don't I've never used or a develop preset so if you import images and develop them as you import them with the preset like one of my one of the Morganti's presets um, then you would do that there I don't do pre I don't uh, apply presets on import myself uh, build preview choices this is the same minimal or whatever uh, you could build smart previews here is convert to DNG. I just noticed that actually. So instead of it being, remember it was along the top, uh, copy as DNG. Now there's a checkbox right here. Uh, make a second copy is the same. You could rename files. Um, although that's a little different in that I believe in the old version when you renamed files, you, um, you could actually um, see uh, where or how you were renaming them. I will uh, go into that a little more in depth um, in the future. I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes as I talk. But um, so you could rename files, I guess. But that I think has changed a little bit um, from uh, the previous import dialog. So uh, 
you know, as I said, some things are missing. We used to be able to zoom in and you could make zoom way in and you could see if your images were sharp or not. And we can't do that anymore before you import them. You used to be able to import duplicate files. Now, you don't always want to do that. You don't want duplicate files in your library usually. Uh, but sometimes you do. You might want the same file in in different folders. So you want to import it more than once. You no longer could import duplicates. Um, so, as I mentioned, this import dialog has changed considerably. The other thing I mentioned earlier is that there's been some performance issues blamed on the new import dialog. I think it's because it like scans your computer looking for new images, even when you're working on images. So it kind of slows things down. And there's different way you could... Um, you could, well, first of all, you could turn this off. You know, when we go to import and we were presented with this, we could get rid of this screen. And one way to do it is if you hold the command or control key in while you click this import button, you'll bypass that screen and go right to this uh, secondary screen. The other way is if you just want, oops, that's another thing. I actually, I've been doing this quite a bit. I want to close down the import dialog, and we used to just click the little X up in the left-hand corner. That actually will close uh, Lightroom completely down, and we don't want to do that. You have to click Cancel over here. So that's another little change. Um, the other thing is if we never want to see that screen again, and there are reports that this helps Lightroom run a little faster, is we would go up to Lightroom if we have a Mac or edit if you have a PC and go to preferences and under the general tab show add photo screen turn that off then what happens is when you import you go up here it'll you don't have that first screen anymore you just have this one and remember you might be presented with this and you have to select your source and then select your destination over here. So there are some significant changes, not only cosmetically, but to uh, the functionality of the import dialog. And oops, see, I did it again. I want to close that down. I hit there. It's out of habit. I've been using Lightroom for so long. If I closed down an import dialog, I would always click there. You got to click there. So. Um, I don't care for it, but again, it's probably for the better that they changed it this way. For new users, I would suspect that it's considerably easier for new users. Um, for more experienced us users, you are losing some um, functionality that was available in the, um, the original import dialog. Uh, one significant one, if I didn't mention it already, there was a checkbox to eject your card after import. So I always had that check. So I would import my images and Lightroom would eject my memory card. That's no longer an option. So you have to manually eject your memory card. So remember to do that. If you have a Mac or a PC, it doesn't matter. Uh, after you import your images, you'll have to go through Windows or go through uh, Finder in Mac and or just right click on the, um, on the uh, memory card and eject it. So you're going to have to manually eject your memory card. That That is one, um, to me, significant uh, change, um, you know, with this latest version. And I mentioned the, um, the folder tree. To me, that's a big deal because I always use the folder tree. Um, ability to zoom in the, the photos to check for sharpness. Um, you used to be able to filter by destination folders or where you sent things. You can't do that anymore. Um, also in the import dialog, in the original import dialog, there was a uh, total file size was in the lower left hand corner. That's gone. So you don't know how large of an import you're importing anymore. If you use that, I'm not sure if you use that. Um, and I mentioned, uh, you used to be able to import duplicates. You can't do that any longer. So that's some of the significant, uh, changes, uh, in this latest version of Lightroom. That's Lightroom 6.2 if you're a standalone owner. If you're a Creative Cloud user, it's 2015.2.
Um, I will later in the week be doing a uh, video where I'll be going over the import dialog a little more in depth um, and how to import your images. Um, so it's, yeah, like I said, I'm a little disappointed in the new import dialog and most of the people I've talked to, my photographer friends, are as well. But I suspect, as I mentioned, it will be easier to use for new users. So that's it for this video. Uh, again, in the description below, I'll have a link to Adobe where you could uh, see what bug fixes they did, what new lens profiles they have, and what support they have for any of the newer cameras. All right, that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys soon.